Hi friends. As I promised you last time, this time we're going to make a weighing balance. We need very simple material, and I'm sure every one of you must be having these at home. So we need one hanger. This is the basic and the most important thing in our weighing balance, and a hook. So that this hanger suspends very nicely and can move on this hook. It should not be very tight, so that it will not move, but it should be freely suspended. Then we need a plain paper so that we can mark a perpendicular line and we know our balance getting offset. Then we need two paper cups. These are going to act as weighing pans some thread to tie these weighing pans to our balance and some things whatever things you have in our house or just collect some stones and you can use them as weights scissors and pencils let's start So as I showed you, mark the paper half and then again fold it half to mark a line. But before marking this line, just suspend your balance on the paper and see where it intersects your perpendicular line. But now if, to know if that is perpendicular or not, just fold the paper half again so that you get a perpendicular line. So you don't need to use any uh, set squares or any compass. This is an easy way to find the perpendicular of this line. When you find the perpendicular line for this intersection line, just mark it with a pencil. So that when we put some weights in one of the pans, we know that the, our balance is offset. Now I'm going to put some woolen balls to nullify this weight. It is a bit offset. I am going to put some smaller woolen ball and now you can see my hanger is exactly aligned with the line I have already drawn. So I can firmly say that the weight of these two pebbles is equal to the weight of these two woolen balls. Fun, right? You can use any objects that you have at home and try to use your balance. And as I told you, you can weigh your container directly by hanging it to the hanger. Try it one more time. So now it's time for a story. I'm sure you have all loved the toy that we just made and it is a very useful toy. You can Measure the weights of different things in your house. Try it. And you can also make your own household weights. Now, let's start the story. It is about the most famous mathematician in Indian history. The first Indian satellite is named after him. He is the inventor of zero. I'm sure you all must have guessed his name. Yes, he is the Aryabhatta. As we must have all seen a statue of Aryabhatta in Ayuka or the images of the same, 
We see a finger pointed at the sky and a spark of brilliance in his eyes. This is the image that comes to our mind when we think of this mathematician and an astronomer. He is a very well-known mathematician who was a pioneer in bringing a change in the field of mathematics and astronomy. Aryabhatta was born during the Gupta age around 476, 476 AD. Yes, he is that old. Which is also considered to be the golden age of mathematics and ancient Indian learnings. The capital of the kingdom of Magadha was Patliputra, known as Bihar now, was a great center of learning back then. The famous University of Nalanda was situated here and it is widely speculated that Aryabhatta might have been the head of the astronomical observatory there. He was one of the first to use algebra. He is well known for introducing the concept of alphabetical system of expressing numbers. The greatest and the most famous thing he did was coming up with the concept of zero. It is also believed that he was essentially responsible for the birth of modern trigonometry. He also made several discoveries in the field of astronomy. In those days, it was a common belief among people that Earth was the center of the universe and this concept was known as geocentrism. That earth is the center and the sun and the other planets, whatever you see in the sky is revolving around the earth. This was thought by the people back then. It is so obvious. Today also we can see the sun is moving. We can see the earth, is, the sun is going from east to west. So it was very obvious for the people to think so that the earth is situated at the center and all the other things are moving around it. But Aryabhatta promoted the notion that earth is spherical. It spins on its own axis and the earth has an axis first of all and the earth revolves around the sun and not the other way around. Yes, of course, then uh, the modern scientist came who observed this and then proved all these things but he was the first one who actually mathematically calculated all these things and told these things to the world. The, this brief was not accepted by the others in those times. He also stated that the moon and the planets shine by the reflected sunlight. It was also believed that the eclipse caused by the pseudo planetary nodes Rahu and Ketu. It was thought back then. But he was the one who explained that eclipse is the term of shadows that cast by the earth or those shadows that fall on the earth and not by any Rahu or Ketu. It is indeed incredible how he could explain both lunar and solar eclipses so accurately. He also calculated the circumference and diameter of earth and the radius of the orbits of all the planets. It is astonishing to think that one man and one mind can find so many things in one lifetime. He also found mathematical instruments we use in the geometry box today. He found those mathematical instruments and geographical facts that we know very commonly as knowledge today. India's first Satellite was named after Aryabhatta as a tribute to this man whose knowledge has no bounds. Just like the limitless space, Aryabhatta was a man beyond his years. So at those times also he thought, he calculated and he did not think that people are opposing, people are saying that no this is not true. But he believed in himself and he did what he loved and he did not fear about the world. This is I think what we should learn from today's story. And now let's make a toy which is a game today. Let's do it. Hi everyone. I hope you have loved this story and now it's time for a toy. So I thought 
that Aryabhatta is was a great mathematician. So why not make something about maths today? So today's toy is not actually a toy, but it's a board game. I'm sure every one of you have played board game before, but you have bought these board games. Today we're going to make one. So it's summer holidays and summer holidays is the best time to play board games. Let's start. So to make this toy, we need a card sheet paper or a cardboard paper. You can paint around to make your board game more interesting. So the main element of our board game is this number line. To draw this number line, use a scale. You can choose your own unit to mark these numbers, the places to play. For this board game, I have considered 2 centimeters to be my first place. 4 becomes the second, 6 the third and similarly on the other side. Mark 2 centimeters as minus 1, 4 as minus 2 and along till minus 9. Now we need some chips of paper to write down our instructions. So this board game goes as, to play a board game we need one dice and two pieces. You can play with as many number of friends as you like or you can play this board game alone. So now let's start. Six. So you go and pick up number six. Which says, play six if you arrive at an even number divided by two. If you arrive at an odd number, you are safe. So play six. One, two, three, four. 5, 6. 6 is an even number divided by 2. So that becomes 3. You come back at 3. If you are already at 3, then you are safe. Now, for example, while playing, you are at minus 4. Minus 4 divided by 2 gives you minus 2. You need to come to minus 2. And there are different, different instructions for different dice which are given here on the screen. You can make this board game more interesting by making a bigger board game. Now you can use bigger pieces and two dice to play. You can make your own instructions for the dice and you can play on your bigger board game. You can even use cars as your pieces to play and see where you reach. I hope you love this board game and next meetup next time.